hard work piece. So when you add smart to hard work and you get success, and I just know you guys are going to bring it home. But I, I just enjoy meeting and all of you and spending time with all of you. And thank you for having me. Thank you. And he said, hey, you're going to come and speak and we're going to talk about leadership. I'm like, okay, whatever. And uh, I showed up the day before and I had no idea what was going on. Uh, I was overwhelmed and just completely enthralled with what Phi Theta Kappa was doing. Uh, and that's kind of what got me started. And Patty said, great, now you're a co advisor. This is how Patty works. I say, yes, Patty. Yes, Patty. So I wanted to take a little bit of a leap. Uh, incorporate a little bit about what you are doing with your Honors in Action program guide. Uh, as my co-advisors know, I am not a researcher, so I did not do a full Honors in Action research project, uh, but I wanted to at least use the topic uh, and kind of give you some ideas about leadership from the idea of focusing on why you have leadership through uh, ideas of individualism in your chapters as well as a collectivism mentality. Uh, today we're going to discover different styles of
it was because of Upward Bound that I discovered things about myself that I never knew. Uh, I went to a really small high school. I didn't like my high school experience. Uh, and the summer times at Bloomberg University, I was able to go beyond my comfort zone. And they challenged me to go beyond my comfort zone. It was the first time I ever had the, was required to speak in public. Uh, and I remember very void of being our communications teacher, uh, challenging us to different speech topics and how to get up there and talk to different people. So I really credit uh, the summer of 91, that sticker uh, got lost. Uh, the summer of 91, it was where I think a lot of my journey began. Uh, from Upward Bound, I then had the opportunity to uh, go work at the University of Delaware. The University of Delaware was my first real job. I worked at UD for about 12 years. Uh, and one of the highlights of my experience at UD was running the tour guide program for Bloomin' Ambassadors. Uh, it's through the Bloomin' Ambassadors that I understood the idea of student development, student leadership, um, and what we needed to do to encourage college students to become better people. Uh, and the Bloomin' Ambassadors taught me a lot. Uh, I remember one of my first groups of student coordinators I had, um, I, took them one, I took them each out to lunch, they were all graduating, and one of them sat down and uh, we were chatting about what was going on that previous year and what her thoughts were for the program, um, and as I shared my idea, she looked at me and she says, well, I just have one thing to say to you. I'm like, oh, okay, and I was like, who's that? You know, I was like 23, I was all excited, you know, young professional, and she's like, I think you're the worst thing to ever happen with this program. <laughs> okay, you're running your own lunch now, right? <laughs> And like, I just had to sit there and like soak in all of this negative energy that she's been carrying around with her for like this past year. And some of it was, was there were genuine concerns. I could see you had different ideas, different thoughts, different processes. I was an outsider to her. Um, and there was no rebuttal. You know, that was a moment in life where you just kind of got to sit there and take it. And I used that summer then to learn and grow and think differently about the program. And my career then at UD dramatically changed from so as rough as that conversation was, it certainly helped me. A uh, little bit more about me. I have a couple alter egos, right? One of those alter egos is the bow tie guy. So uh, you can find me at nickbowtie.com. Uh, feel free to look that up. Uh, I also have my previous Phi Theta Kappa presentations out there uh, if you want to look at any of those from the past couple of years. So you can find me at Nick Bowtie. Uh, you can also find me as Mike McPez. Uh, I have a fairly extensive Pez collection. Uh, a little embarrassing. People come to my office and get a little overwhelmed by the, you know, hundred some Pez dispensers I have in my office, and my wife gets very angry that I have three storage exactly. tubs of hundreds of Pez at home that she still won't let me put on display. Uh, but someday, watch out. For me. Uh, and then the final alter ego, some of you know, is of course my complex. So uh, hashtag Instagram, whatever. So, defining leadership. If you took an opportunity and went to Google, went to Amazon, and looked for books on leadership, you would find hundreds and thousands of options. Uh, and a lot of times leadership focuses on individual styles of leadership for an individual person. Right? We know of autocratic, we can look at democratic leadership, the laissez-faire, hands-off style of leadership, transactional, there's coaching, there's charismatic, there's visionary. And all these different styles of leadership are ways that some of your advisors might interact with you, some of your deans and directors might be interacting with their divisions, and in some ways, some of you might be interacting with other people within your chapter. What I wanted to do today, though, was think a little bit differently and, and not focus on these individual leadership styles, but more so think about leadership uh, for your team. Uh, we're not talking about team dynamics, we're not talking about group dynamics, we're not what makes the best teams the worst teams, whatever. We want to talk about two different ways of approaching your team to really encourage your members, your fellow chapter officers, your advisor, to become a better person in your chapter. So one of those theories we're going to talk about is this individualistic style of leadership. When we think about somebody in this sense, it's somebody who really has that self-made attitude. It's somebody who likes to make up their own mind, do their own thing. They show initiative, they like to work independently. And sometimes they like to go and break the rules a little bit and ignore the things that they really don't care about. They seem irrelevant, right? So for some people, that could be the process of how to do honors in action, <laughs> right? They want to start with the action first, 
which we know might not be the way to do it. So, but we need to embrace that sense of mentality because these are the people that, that are truly the ones that are going to get it done. They're going to work on their tasks, they're going to do 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 their tasks, they're
What are you doing right now? Just why she's almost here to Remember, right? So take a moment at your table. Some of you are with your chapters, so this could be a, a little interesting conversation. And share some of your goods and bad with each other. And just put it out there. Claim it, own it.
So it felt really good to share the good about ourselves. How did it feel to share the not so good things about ourselves? Um, I'm kind of funny. So this is great, getting a reinforcement for how bad you are. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're pretty aggressive by your turn. Yeah, you're a control freak, right? Ernie and Kate, anything to give back to me? Was I on point? You're perfect. Oh, it's perfect. Perfectly negative traits, right? <laughs> Thanks, Ernie. You're awesome. So that gives you an idea then about what you're bringing, what your individual traits, the good and the bad, that you're bringing to your chapter. And for those of you that were sitting with your chapter, it gives you an idea about other people in your chapter and what they're bringing, right? And that gives you the idea about how you can go back and balance your chapters out to create that, that uh, yin and yang, that balance of good and bad, to really highlight people's individual strengths. So a great activity to go back for your next chapter meeting, right? It puts it all out there on the table before you dive into an honors and action project where the first thing you do is fight over what topic and what theme you're gonna choose, right? Put it all out there first. Say, here's what we're going to be go going through with our personalities. Now, let's put that away and let's move towards a common goal. That brings us to what would be the idea of collectivism in leadership. So, collective leadership ideas occur when people come together, mobilize human, cultural, educational forces in ways to improve their communities. Sounds like an honors and action. It's an all-inclusive approach, asking individuals across boundaries, age, income, religion, culture, educational background, to commit to learning, to commit to action, for shared responsibility, and mutual accountability. Those are all really big words. Learning, action, responsibility, and accountability. That's everything that's a part of your Honors in Action project. Honors in Action highlights collective leadership. There's a UK-based consulting firm that has established an entire center on collective leadership. They find it so important and so vital for the world economy that they've created a center just for it, uh, Deloitte. And their CEO said, creating an environment for large groups of people to work together towards a common purpose is a fundamental leadership challenge. So it's really easy to lead people sometimes in a task but when you're trying to lead people through a project, it gets really challenging. It gets challenging for your advisors and for your chapter officers. Their executive director, Langton, said, until now, leaders themselves have been seen as critical to their organization's success. Increasingly, leaders are realizing that their people's commitment to the organizational goals is, in fact, the underlying condition for success. So how many of you are leaders in the room? Guess what? It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about everybody else that's back at your school that are members of Phi Theta Kappa, that are not members of Phi Theta Kappa. Those are the ones that are going to drive your success. Right? So much for a leadership talk, right? It's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. It's all about the people back at your campus. So there's a uh, But they wanted to make sure that they had all the right people around the table to make their project work. So it wasn't about necessarily those that wanted to be involved in the project. It was making sure that those that were involved in the project were the right people. So this is an opportunity to go back and again reflect on your chapter. Think about who wants to get involved. And ask them, what do you enjoy doing? What do you find interesting about research? 
and let them work on that task. It's not about assigning somebody something to do and they're not gonna like it. It's about finding their strength and building that support network in your organization to make good things happen. They focused on having that comma agenda. We're gonna come back to this in a, in a little bit what a comma agenda really is about. It's about taking that moment and jotting down what you're working on. Making sure you understand what your chapter is about, what your mission is about. Knowing the bylaws of your chapter, something that I know I need to work on for our chapters in Delaware. It's about understanding the mission of Phi Theta Kappa, right? Ultimately, that impacts what your chapters are doing. Have any of you gone to ptk.org and looked at the mission of Phi Theta Kappa? Good, because you're probably working on a competitive edge, right? So, common agenda, having that set core in principle. Making sure there are shared goals, data, and measurement. That nobody's working in their silos on these projects. Nobody's working in a silo on honors in action. That you do your work, you come back and report, and you share that information. Sounds pretty easy, but this is where things start breaking down. This is where communication starts not working as well because you stop communicating. You begin working in that silo of singularity. Focus on that continued communication. This organization, uh, all professionals working in, in housing and urban development uh, and, and political roles, uh, met on a regular basis. And they're busy people. They have many other things to be focused on in their roles, but they wanted to focus on homelessness. So they met on a very regular basis. So you need to reflect, how often does your chapter meet? Does your chapter need to meet on a regular basis to do honors in action? Or can subgroups be formed to work on honors in action topics to report back at a later time? And then when those subgroups happen, what, what goes on there? Who's communicating that to the leadership in the chapter? Who's letting the advisor know what's going on in that little moment? So making sure that you have a method of communication to keep track of everything that is taking place. And then ultimately, finding things that are supporting each other to reinforce each other. We all are busy. We all have many things to do. We never want to create double work for ourselves. So as we begin thinking about what you are working through in honors and action, this is where collaboration comes into play with another organization to figure out, hey, if we do this together, it's gonna to help you, it's gonna help me, we're gonna make really great things happen on our campus and in our community. So it's not about doing multiple work, it's not about recreating the wheel, it's about reaching out to someone and saying, hey, that's a really cool idea, can I borrow that? Jennifer, can I borrow the game of life? <laughs> Thank you, right? So, and then it's not me just borrowing her game of life to use at my canvas. I have to figure out with a team, how does that reinforce other activities that are going on at my institution? It's not about just playing a game uh, to do, to get people to get to graduation for a diploma, right? That's not the game. The game is how else is that gonna play into other activities that we do, right? We have a whole week at Delaware Tech called Halfway There Week. It's the ninth week of our semester, the halfway point. I have to do programming every day that week to get students to be encouraged to get to graduation. So the game of life in week 10 doesn't really have anything else to go along with it. But the game of life on Thursday of halfway there week is a culmination point of other things I can build to get students to that activity, right? So it's all about building and creating and sharing those ideas that reinforce each other. So when you go back today to your next round of honors in action session topic discussions, uh, I know yesterday there was a lot of arguing going on about the topics, right? A lot of people may be thinking about their individualistic ideas and not the collective whole of what needs to happen. Here's a way to go about breaking down that task. Here's a way to go back and think about it. It's not about my idea. It's not about my topic. It's about a topic that's going to get us through this weekend, right? And move forward into a new direction. It should be simple. It should be easy, and you should be able to work collectively to make that happen for yourselves, right? The great thing about what you do with these little sessions is that's your baseline to go back to your chapter and do the same exact thing. What you're doing here is kind of, I don't want to say fake, but it's kind of like, it's not real. Like, this topic that you're working on now isn't going to be your topic when you go back to your campus because you have a whole other set of people to be dealing with. So you want to get through this in an easy way because the harder it is here, imagine what it's going to be like when you go back to people that you know, right? You want to make it 
easy when you get back to your home campus, because at that point, you have classes to do, you have life to go back to, you have work to go back to. So that's a little bit of thought of collective leadership. We're gonna take all of those principles and we're gonna go back to that comma agenda night idea. And we're gonna talk about one of my favorite people, his name is Simon Sinek. Uh, and he has one of the best TED Talks that is out there. Have you all watched the Power of Why TED Talk? Yeah, Power of Why TED Talk is 17 minutes and it is life changing. Uh, and it's really bad sound quality at the beginning. Uh, he has some technology issues. He uses a flip chart, right? Uh, but it is, I think, the single best TED Talk you could ever invest time into. So TED Talks, Simon Sinek, Power of Why. And what he talks about in his TED Talk is the ability to start with why, and it's really about uh, asking the question of why. Now, how cool is that? Like, that's his vibe. He's an optimist. He believes in a bright future and our ability to build it together. What else do we need to know about? I'm sold. Right? So really cool guy, really cool guy to watch. So his whole concept is about the golden circle. And he gives examples about Apple, he gives examples about the Wright brothers, so lots of great things. But the outcome of what he talks about is companies that do okay work are the companies that begin with the question of what. They begin with that idea of what am I doing? What's my project? What's my, what, what's my goal? What, what am I doing for the greater good of the world? His idea that flips it around is that you're starting with the why. That it's not about the what you're doing, it's the why you're doing it. So it's not about an honors and action project, it's why you're doing an honors and action project. It's not about what Phi Theta Kappa is, it's about why there is Phi Theta Kappa. And those are the questions that he challenges you all to go back, back and ask yourself, is to think about the what, but begin with the why. So I'm totally not gonna steal his thunder, because you seriously, between now and tomorrow, tomorrow's gonna be a rainy, cruddy day, right? All over the middle states region, right? Wake up at some point tomorrow morning and listen to the TED Talk. Download it, and in your vans on the way back, listen to it as a chapter. Right? It's 17 minutes, and it's a very, very good, easy way to get through and get some ideas flowing about thinking about the why within your chapter. Patty's a really kind individual, uh, and I said to her, I said, Patty, I think we need to buy a book. Uh, so each chapter is going to go back with uh, Simon's book, Start With Why. Uh, it's a really... <laughs> So each, uh, one advisor from each chapter uh, can stop up when we're done here this morning and pick up a book uh, and take this back and let this be a moment of inspiration for your chapter. Uh, maybe every week a member of your chapter leadership team reads the chapter and gives a synopsis on what that chapter was, right? You could buy <coughs> other copies of it and have a Phi Theta Kappa book club. There's a cool idea. That's a really good idea. Uh, and let it be a book about starting with why, right? Easy thing to do, and that probably would count towards some type of, I don't know, five-star status in some way, right? Right? Not to write the book. It's a way to make it happen. Right? So, taking those two ideas then, collective and individualism and leadership, competition makes you faster, collaboration makes you better. Competition is that individualistic idea, collaboration is that collective, right? So the individual traits of each of you are gonna push your chapter that much further, that idea of collaboration and good stuff. We all doing good? Doing okay? It's early, right? So I mentioned I like to end things with a challenge. And this, uh, when I left campus on, when did we leave, Thursday? Um, this was not part of what I want to talk about today. But I had a moment that happened on Thursday uh, that made me go here, and I thought, let's talk about this. And this became the challenge for you. So have any of you heard of the fish philosophy? Yes. Yes? Who's heard of the fish philosophy? Raise your hand. 
Awesome. Almost no one. <laughs> so the fish philosophy is based on, again, this is a really, this book is like this thick. It's so short, you can read it in the bathroom quickly. Um, and it talks about Pike Place Fish Market out in Seattle. These are the fishmongers that flip and throw fish, and they have a great time, they love their jobs, but they stink and they smell, uh, and nobody understands why these guys are so happy, and gals, are so happy at their job. And it's because they develop their own philosophy of how to get through life, and how to get through work and jobs and organizations. So they focus on a number of different areas, and there's four of them. And I would encourage you to write these down. You don't have to write down the quotes, but write down the main points. And one of them is all about choosing your attitude. And in order to get through your day, in order to get, help people get through their other days, it's all about how you choose your attitude and the impact that that has on the other people. How are you contributing to other people's perceptions? So, and this came to me, came to me because on Thursday morning, um, I was uh, in a meeting that I was facilitating on an event we had coming up at our college. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm not thrilled to be on this committee. Right? Who's thrilled to be on another committee? And this was kind of one of those options that they just said, hey Mike, this is what you're doing next. I'm like, awesome, I'm so excited. <laughs> so I did not choose a good attitude, so let's just throw that in. But I tried to embrace this option and this option. So this was the second of our training meetings. We had some new people in the room. Some people that were in a couple areas. We had to say a couple certain things like you're working, you're not eating at the snack bar. You know, you do not just go and leave your post without being told you can leave your post. And these are colleagues, these are some people that are above my pay grade, some people that are below my pay grade. So it's an awkward situation to be telling these people what they can and cannot do. So I go back to my office, and I hadn't been in my office yet that morning. So I'm walking around, I'm like, hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. As I turn the corner, I hear, and then he said this in the meeting, and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, huh, well, he just left the same thing that I did. So I peeked around the corner, I'm like, right. And he's looked at me and said, Everything okay? And he's like, well, I just didn't appreciate when you said this and this and this and this. I'm like, okay, well, can we sit down and talk? Nope, I'm done. So he was clearly done. So, uh, and it took me a while. And when we were riding back here, here on the van, I shared this experience. Uh, so my apologies to those in the van who've heard this now twice. Uh, but it really, it really bothered me. And it took me a while to think about what bothered me more. Him talking to a colleague behind my back, still uh, or two, his perception of what I was trying to say. And what I realized is I could have said the exact same thing that I said in a different way to get that exact same point across, right? Because you have to always think about what's coming out of your mouth and how it will be received by that other individual. So what I said about not rushing the buffet line for the reception while you're working I could have said it in a much different way, maybe such as, you know, we have to remember we're all working this event, so let's wait till we're released at the end, and then you can go have some refreshments with the rest of your colleagues. I said the exact same thing, just a different way, and he did not receive it in an appropriate way. So it took me to this moment of saying, I need to remember how to choose my attitude when I'm talking to individuals, when I'm running a meeting, and when I'm uh, interacting with So she was coming in here to get some work done. We were in here doing yoga, and then I turned the lights off on her. And she stopped. She put her phone down, and she just breathed for 
three minutes with us. And that completely changed her day. So Patty took a moment to be present with herself, which is awesome. We don't do that enough either. This is asking you to be present with other people. So when someone comes up to you and says, hey, how are you? And you say, great, how are you? Well, I had a really bad day. Oh, OK. And then you walk away. You're not being there for that person. So I try to make a conscious effort, effort, and I don't do this well enough, but I chose to not ask people, how are you today sometimes? I'm making a choice, I'm choosing my attitude because I don't maybe want to get involved in a conversation, but if I'm gonna ask you, who you how you're doing, I need to be there with you to find out how you're doing, right? That's being there for that person, and that's maybe helping me choose the right attitude. And if I don't want to find out how they're doing, then I really am not gonna to want to ask that question. And that's okay. The other point that here is about trying to make someone's day. And this could be the easiest thing to do in your entire life, is to do one task every day to do something nice for someone else. That could be simply meaning you hold the door for the person coming behind you. It could mean that when we're all moving out tomorrow and somebody needs help loading their bag into the car, you lift up their bag for them and put it in the car for them. It means that when you're struggling to get a napkin out of the napkin holder, you get the napkin for them and say, oh, you walk me back to your table. I see your hands It's a very, very easy thing to make someone's day. All the time at the Starbucks windows. Oh, everybody's buying the coffee for the person behind. That's a lovely notion. Lovely notion. I encourage that. But it doesn't take money to make someone's day. It's a very simple idea, a very simple task, is to take time to try to make someone's day. And the last thing that I encourage you to think about is the best thing, and this is about finding time to play. Right? Play is awesome. We played yesterday with those spaghetti sticks and marshmallows. That was a form of play to get you to think about teamwork. Uh, going back to my days as Blue Man Ambassadors, I learned about the fish philosophy after I had that conversation with a student that said I was the worst thing that ever happened to the organization. Great, good timing. Uh, and we used to do these open houses, and these open houses would bring thousands of people to campus. Uh, and our tour guides had to get up at like six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday to work these tours. Uh, and we need to do something fun. So we would have a morning meeting, we'd get them coffee in Danish, and then I would take five minutes, maybe less, and I would sing them a pop song rewritten from a tour guide perspective. Right? I'm not a singer, I'm not a dancer, but I totally had fun doing it, and they cracked up. And when I said I wasn't gonna do it anymore, they're like, whoa, I ain't gonna be a tour guide if you're not singing. So for about seven years, I had to write songs nine times a year, and perform them in front of my tour guides. And then my, and then my colleagues heard about it, and then they started coming in to watch. So it's the ultimate level of embarrassment. <laughs> but by me putting myself out there, I then challenged them, because the one thing that never worked well for open houses was showing off the rest of the songs. There would always be a line, you have to go to the dorm, there would always be a message. Well, what can you do to make this more fun? They said, we want beach balls, we want bubbles, and they wanted dirt balls. So while people were standing in line, Bubbles, they were playing dirt balls with the kids out the lawn, and they were launching, uh, launching beat balls down. And they found ways to make a very mundane, boring task just a little bit more fun for everyone involved. They made their afternoon go that much better. They made the families appreciate that they had to stand in line to see a dorm room. Really exciting. Uh, and it got everybody through that moment of stress. Right? It just made it a little bit more fun. So my challenge is we have about 24 more hours to be together here at Middle States Academy and Institute. My challenge to, you challenge to you is to do each of these items for other people in the next 24 hours. I don't know how you're gonna do it. Honestly, I'm choosing my attitude to say, I don't care how you do it. But I'm challenging you to find a way to choose your attitude, and this could be totally an impact when you go into your session meeting for your next topic discussion, because I know you're all really excited to go back to those discussions that you had yesterday. This is going to be an opportunity uh, to make someone's day. Maybe you say, how about you sit down and we'll get your for you. Right? That could be nice. Thinking about how you're going to be present to everybody that's here. And then ultimately, between now and when you leave tomorrow, finding that moment of play. Somehow to turn this learning academy institute leadership thingy into a moment of play over the next 24 hours. Is that a challenge that you're all willing to accept? Yeah! You can report back.
back to me. I'd be happy to listen to what you've done, right? If you've done something really cool, tweet it, Facebook it, hashtag it, whatever. And I ultimately encourage you to go check out the Fish Philosophy on, online, fishphilosophy.com. They have a great Facebook page as well that you can look into uh, and pull up some great information. How are we doing, Patrick? And as soon as I like sat down at my desk, they said, oh, the guy that replaced you just resigned. You're going back to the tour guide program. <laughs> and like we had already done this great going away party. They were all sad and leaving. And then I came back. And it was just when uh, JT came out with Free and Sexy back. So I rewrote it to the Ring and Mikey back. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. It was pretty on point. Yeah. I'm nothing better. <laughs> Individualism, collectivism, leadership, fish philosophy, anything like that? Awesome. You guys are great. I'm so honored to be a part of Pi Theta Kappa. Good luck for the rest of your weekend. 24 hours, fish challenge. Make good things happen. Sound good? Get your books. Start with the live. One chapter advice. 